Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be baking some banana bread today. Now, growing up, I grew up with like a full on stereotypical Italian grandmother. Like everything from scratch, she always baked, which meant she always had a cake on her countertop, regardless of if it was holiday, what time of year it was, anything. She could make absolutely anything. You would go in and her house on Sundays, there would be pasta hanging on hangers in her kitchen that she had made from scratch. Um, just everything. Wedding cakes, beautifully decorated. So I grew up learning how to bake from her, but now trying to eat healthier and stuff and trying to find ways to adapt any of these recipes. Now this recipe is not mine. I did not come up with it. I found it when I was looking for recipes with coconut flour, but it's banana bread baked with um, coconut flour. Now, just when you use that, it's not interchangeable with regular flour, just because it needs a lot of liquid with it. And a little bit goes a really, really long way. So you don't wanna like, if a recipe calls for regular flour, you need to specifically look for recipes with coconut flour. So the ingredients today, all you need is bananas, like really ripe ones that you probably wouldn't eat because the skin looks super round. Um, cinnamon, baking soda, vanilla, coconut flour, eggs, almond butter. I am using Trader Joe's peanut butter today just because I don't have any almond butter at the house. Um, baking soda, cinnamon, vanilla, I think I said everything. Oh, and dark chocolate chips. So first thing we're gonna do, preheat your oven to 350. If you have a pan like this, that's what you're gonna use. I lined it with parchment paper. You don't want your stuff to stick in there because that would like seriously suck. Um, and the next thing you're gonna do, I have a mixer. If you don't have a mixer, totally okay. You can use a hand mixer. You probably realistically could do this on my hand. But when I bake, I prep everything out. Like I measure everything. I have it all set up before I even start. Okay. First step, I'm gonna mash your bananas. I have just a potato masher. Fork would probably do perfectly fine as well. I'm gonna get those all mashed up. They'll finish getting mashed whenever I put them with the mixer. Now remember these are gonna be like super ripe bananas. After that, you're gonna add in your almond butter and vanilla. So like I said, I already have it all pre-measured out. So this is just, what is it? Like a teaspoon of vanilla. And I actually always use, anytime we've ever been to Mexico, we always get like just the pure vanilla. So I have like a huge thing of that that I use. And then the almond butter, this is actually a fourth of a cup measured out. If you have one of these, they're super awesome. It's really easy to get everything in. Then we're gonna go to the mixer attach this on and start mixing it up. Okay, so now we're over here at the mixer. Okay, so turn this on to medium, low speed. If you have a hand mixer, it's gonna be the same thing. You're gonna mix this up until it's just kind of well combined. Now, important thing here and just pro tip, Robbie, this is for you. When you're doing eggs, I always crack mine one at a time, especially if one's like rotten or not good. You won't mess up the entire recipe if you do them all at once. So you're gonna actually specifically for this recipe, pour your eggs in one at a time until it's just combined again. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the mixer down a little bit because I'm about to add the coconut flour and I don't wanna splash all of my face. So you're gonna add a little bit of coconut flour at a time. Get that all nice and mixed up. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in our baking soda and cinnamon. I already have those pre-measured out and I'll include the measurements for each, but I think it was three fourths of a teaspoon of baking soda, a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and then a fourth a teaspoon of salt. All right, good. Now this is all good and mixed up. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and scrape the spatula off. The next thing we're gonna do in our final step before we put it in the pan is fold in the 
dark chocolate chips. Now you can save some of these or put a little bit of extra on top if you would like, you don't have to. And if you're a fan of Schitt's Creek, when they talk about folding in the cheese, this just reminded me of that. Oh, next step is to fold in the cheese. What does that mean? What does fold in the cheese mean? He folds it in. I, I understand that, but how, how do you fold it? Do you fold it in half like a piece of paper and drop it in the pot, or what do you do? David, I cannot show you everything. Okay, well, can you show me one thing? I love that show. So literally, you just take the sides, fold it all in. Once we're done with this, we're gonna put it into the pan that we've prepped with the parchment paper, and make sure you spray that down with cooking oil or butter, if you'd prefer. Then we're gonna put it in the oven and let it bake. All right, guys, just took the banana bread out of the oven. It took, it says to bake 350, 25 to 35 minutes. Mine took about 33 minutes. I left it in there to bake. I did 25 minutes on the timer and then I let it go another eight minutes. Let it go until you insert a knife and it comes out relatively clean. Um, this is final. So you wanna let it cool on a wire rack for 20 minutes. Leave it in the pan. After that, you're gonna remove it from the wire rack. It should be pretty easy with the parchment paper or you could invert it and flip it. Let it cool completely before you eat it. Banana bread will stay like kind of mushy while it's still warm. And so if you eat it as soon as it comes out, it's gonna be kind of a not weird texture, but it'll just be, like I said, pretty mushy.